Brighter Day, brought to you by Draft, America's favorite brand for dishes. It's only the barest little room, isn't it? I don't know why, but I feel somehow that God is in this room. We'll be back with a brighter day in just a moment. Now, here's Leonard Sterling. Now, I know all you mothers are as conscientious as the day is long about the health of your family. You build the youngsters up with healthy foods, make them put on dry clothes when they come in out of the rain, all the thousand and one things that help keep them healthier. But I'd like to suggest something else you can do, a surprising thing. Wash your dishes with Dreft, because Dreft in your dishpan helps protect your family's health as no suds ever could before. Yes, by doing dishes with Dreft, you can help cut down on colds and flu this winter. You see, public health authorities, doctors, have discovered that germs can breed in dishwater film. Even dishes that look clean to you or me can carry this germ-breeding film, can carry cold germs, flu, even scarlet fever and whooping cough. But the amazing thing about Dreft is it never leaves any germ-breeding film. Dreft washes dishes healthfully clean, free of film as no suds ever could before. So always wash your dishes in thick, rich Dreft suds. Give them a hot rinse, the hotter the better, then let them drain dry. They'll shine even without wiping. They're healthfully clean. And just by washing your dishes this easy draft way, you may actually help cut down colds in your family this winter. So heed the warning of public health authorities. Help protect your family's health. Wash your dishes healthfully clean with draft. And now, the brighter day. Yesterday, Liz and Papa Dennis arrived in the little town of Three Rivers, where Papa's been offered a church. And although Three Rivers is the tiniest hamlet, and although Papa's salary would be infinitesimally small, and the congregation few in number and poor in purse, still, Liz knew instantly that in Papa's heart, he wanted to settle here and build a house of God. Right now, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, and Liz and Papa have been making a little tour of the town. They round a corner and, well, listen. Main Street again, Papa. Yes, it, it's a very small town, isn't it? We walked around it in a half an hour. Yes, Papa, small. A uh, quite self-respecting little town, though, wouldn't you say, my dear? The houses freshly painted, the people on the street clean and cheerful, a, a pleasant atmosphere. It's a very pretty town. Farming community, I should judge. The, the center of a little district of farms. Well, they tell me that the farmers are enjoying prosperity these days. You like it very much, don't you, Papa? Well, I, I haven't made up my mind yet, dear. We, we mustn't be hasty now. And after all, no church. I should like to go back and, and look at that store where the congregation's been meeting. Somehow my mind keeps coming back to it. That that simple little altar, the little melodeon, and that odd collection of chairs and benches. All right, Papa. And when we get through there, we'll go and, and look at the house they were talking about. Good, good. Come, my dear, put your arm through mine. I'm enjoying this walk so much. This whole trip, Elizabeth and I, we get along, don't we? Yes, Papa. You and I, we, we do. Well, good morning, oh. Reverend, Miss Dennis. Looking over the community? Oh, the, uh, Mr... Um... It's Mr. Sebastian, the newspaper yes. man. Good morning, Mr. Sebastian. Sebastian it is, Miss Dennis. Flattering that you remembered. I saw you standing here looking around. Need any help? Oh, why, thank you very much, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, no, we're just on our way to look over the... Uh... The congregation's meeting place. Well, they meet next to the supermarket across from my office. I'm going up that way. May I join you? Your permission, Miss Dennis? Of course, why not? 
Did your newspaper go to press last night, Mr. Sebastian? <laughs> yes, it did. I've been up all night. It's a one-man organization. Oh, here. Complimentary copy. Oh, thank you. Well, take, take it, Lizzie. Yes. You get out the paper all by yourself, Mr. Sebastian. That's, right. That's an old-fashioned sort of journalism, which I thought disappeared in my youth. I, I didn't know it still existed. Well, Reverend, if business doesn't get any better soon, it won't exist much longer. Oh, it's just a crazy idea I got in the Army being a country editor. Well, at least you're doing what you want to do. So many of you lads came out of the Army with high hopes for this and that, and many of them have given up. Forced to give up. The word is forced, Reverend. Forced by sour economic determinism. A G.I. comes home, marries his girl, and a year or two there's a kid. Do you know how much money it takes to support a little family these days, even down here? That's why the boys have given up. They couldn't afford to start small. <laughs> well, don't look so surprised, folks. I'm not really a radical. I'm just what's known as a crusading editor. I imagine ministers are in the same fix. Yes, we are. Most other folks, too. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say something now which might be construed as unfriendly. I don't mean it to be unfriendly, but... Reverend, this town could use you, but if I were you, I'd stay away. This tiny town is at the end of the world. It hasn't changed in 60 years, and it'll never change. But, Mr. Sebastian, do you, do you have some special reason for urging that I stay away? I, I, I know the town is small. I happen to know what they're offering you. It's 1800 a year, isn't it? Well, how do you live? A man with your background is just losing himself down here. This is the end of the world, Reverend Dennis. One of the lost little pockets in the lost little valleys of this great big country. Why do you say a, a, a man of my father's background? Do you know anything about my father's background? I'm a professional observer, Miss Dennis. I'm supposed to see what I look at. Don't you think that your father is a man of culture? Oh, you're very flattering, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, may I ask why you came here to this lost little village, as you call it, if it's really as lost as you say? Well, I don't count, Reverend. I'm an idealist and therefore crazy. And won't you permit me to be an idealist and... Uh, Therefore, crazy? <laughs> but I'm young, Mr. Dennis. I don't have a family. I can always pull up stakes and go back to the big city. You must be 55 or 60. I hear you have quite a family. You know, Mr. Sebastian, this is very nice of you, but my father is an idealist. You should have seen that from his car. My daughter has appointed herself as my press agent, Mr. Sebastian. We may regard her remarks as such. It's not wearing your collar backwards that makes an idealist, Miss Dennis. To me, idealism does not mean standing up in church on Sunday and passing the plate. Idealism means getting in there and fighting. Fighting for what's right. Fighting for the brotherhood of man. Not sitting back. Fighting. Like Father Damien and the lepers. He didn't sit here and pass the hat to help the lepers out there. He went among them. Clasped them to his heart. Physically touched them. That's idealism. I'll tell you about a crazy kid in our outfit. He had a scrap with every other man in the platoon. But when we got hemmed in on the beach at Salerno, this kid went up and pulled four wounded men back to the boats one at a time until he got hit himself. And I went up to him and I said, Mick, you're a great big hero. You saved four guys you hate. And he said, oh. somebody loves him. And he died. That's generosity. So I don't like amateurs. 1800 a year today won't support an old maid and her pet pussycat. It's going to be rough, Reverend. Understand that before you start. You seem to be of the impression that you're the only fighter, Mr. Sebastian. You, you think we're soft. I suggest, Mr. Sebastian, that you refrain from criticizing my father until you know him oh, better. Liz, now, here, uh, now, I meant no offense to your father, Miss Dennis. I was making no comparison. My father's been on the firing line in, in matters of right and wrong many times, Mr. Sebastian. Why do you think we came down here if it wasn't because... because why do you think we're leaving Jonesboro? Here's the place where... We're going in now. You'll excuse us. Uh, Liz, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Dennis. I... Well, evidently, I've gotten off to so bad a start with you that anything I might say now would be quite irrelevant. However, if you should decide to come to this infinitesimal hamlet that time forgot, may I say it's our game. And I'll come to you on my knees to say I'm sorry I offended you. Handsome offer, Mr. Sebastian. Thank you. Liz, Liz. <laughs> so long, Reverend. Goodbye, Miss Dennis. If you decide to move to Three Rivers, could I become one of your many admirers? Because I think you're sweet. So long. Good luck. Liz, you were most exceptionally rude to that young man. 
His very calm assumption that, that you're just another preacher living off the fat of the land. Well... His calm assumption that you don't know how to fight for what's right. That big grin of his. He stands there and smiles at us as, as if we were children. Who does he think he is? The door's open, Papa. Go in. You know, I, I found him very pleasant. Uh, and if we do decide to come here, Liz, a pleasant young man like that would be a nice friend for you and Grayling. You made here. me mad. Well. Oh. Papa. How many years have you been a pastor? Thirty? And you've come to this? There are walls. Look at the altar, Papa. Soap boxes. That's why the door was opened. Someone's playing the melodeon. Oh, Liz, my dear. Is this really quite awful? It's only the barest little meeting room, but... Would you be so deeply hurt if I took it. You, you love it, don't you, Papa? Well, I don't know why, my dear, but somehow I feel... I feel that God is in this room. So Papa looks about at that bare little room. And Papa's eyes see the glory of our Lord. Well, uh, what do you think of Mr. Cliff Sebastian, newspaper editor? Liz looks over the house, yes, and looks into her own heart. Tomorrow. I'll say it again because it's important for you to realize this. Draft in your dishpan helps protect your family's health as no suds ever could before. That's the wonderful truth. Why, by doing dishes with Draft, you can actually help cut down on colds and flu in your family this winter. You see, public health authorities, doctors have discovered that germs can breed in dishwater film. Even dishes that look clean can carry this germ-breeding film that often spreads colds and flu. But the wonderful thing about Dreft is it never leaves any germ-breeding film. Dreft leaves dishes healthfully clean, free of film as no suds ever could before. Try it. Always wash your dishes in rich Dreft suds. Give them a hot rinse and let them drain dry. Dishes shine even without wiping. They're healthfully clean. So heed the warning of health authorities. Help protect your family's health. Wash your dishes healthfully clean with Drift. And now this is Ron Rawson inviting you to listen again to The Brighter Day. Brought to you by Drift, America's favorite brand for dishes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.